I'd like to welcome everyone here today. My name is Larry Porter. I'm the former Chrysler worker, auto worker, and the Assistant National Secretary of the Socialist Equality Party in the United States. We are supporting the fight of auto workers and the formation of rank and file committees to oppose the job cuts and the difficult industrial and economic conditions that have been imposed on workers by the big three automakers and their suppliers. As any worker working in the auto plants know, and they rebelled against it by voting down the last contract, the automakers are making incredibly high profits from cheap labor. You now have four and five tiers of workers in any plant, with many temporary workers making poverty wages from a little above the minimum wage doing the same work as the higher tier workers at $28 an hour. All of it agreed to by the unions. There's a changed mood of anger and rebellion in the U.S. and internationally. Workers and young people are looking for a way to fight against corporations and the policies of the government which have created these conditions. With me is Jerry White, the editor of the World Socialist website Auto Newsletter that is co-sponsoring the demonstration to be held at this location this coming Saturday, February 9th at 2 p.m. Jerry will explain the purpose and the aims of the protest. I simply ask that you hold your questions until after he finishes. Jerry? Thank you. Thank you, Larry. This Saturday, February 9th at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, the steering committee of the Coalition of Rank and File Committees will hold a demonstration right here in front of General Motors World Headquarters to mobilize working class opposition to the massive job cuts announced by GM, Ford, and other automakers. The jobs bloodbath was initiated yesterday when GM began laying off over 4,000 engineers, technicians, and other white collar workers. It also emerged that Ford will eliminate the second shift at the Flat Rock assembly plant, wiping out 1,000 hourly workers' jobs by April the 1st. Each one of these layoffs will be a personal tragedy, and the 15,000 job cuts announced by General Motors will be multiplied many times over when related industries are hit. This will have a devastating impact on workers' families and their communities in Detroit, in Lordstown, Ohio, Oshawa, Ontario, and many other areas. Look what deindustrialization has already done to cities like Flint and Dayton, Ohio, where GM has left nothing behind except economic, social, and environmental catastrophe. A new round of closures will mean more home foreclosures, more opioid deaths and suicides, and more schools and social services starved of funding. This is being done for one purpose and one purpose only, to boost the profits of General Motors and further enrich its wealthy shareholders through dividend payments and stock buybacks. Tomorrow, as thousands of white-collar workers continue to be la laid off, General Motors will announce its 2018 profits, which will show billions and billions more. In 1979, during the first Chrysler bailout, the United Auto Workers told workers that concessions would save their jobs. That set into motion four decades of, of endless concessions 
and give backs that have never saved a single job. In 2009, the UAW again accepted sweeping concessions, including having the wages of all new hired workers. An organization like the UAW that accepts bribes from management, that has millions of dollars in GM stock, will do nothing to defend the jobs and livelihoods of workers. That is why the steering committee of the Coalition of Rank and File Committees called the February 9th demonstration. It is not to beg GM, but to begin the mobilization of the working class in this city, across the U.S. and internationally to defend jobs and living standards. This initiative is being supported by the Socialist Equality Party and the World Socialist website Auto Worker Newsletter. All across the world, social anger against inequality is rising. As U.S. and Canadian workers are fighting GM and Ford, tens of thousands of Mexican sweatshop Maquiladora workers are engaged in a courageous strike against the auto companies that feed the big three. 70,000 workers have set up their own independent strike committees to demand substantial wage increases. Now we oppose the anti-Mexican campaign by the UAW and Unifor and call for the unity of all U.S., Canadian and Mexican workers and workers throughout the world to defend the right to jobs. The Coalition of Rank and File Committees is determined that auto workers, whether they are white collar or blue collar, will not be the forgotten men and women of the 21st century. All of these workers belong to the bottom 90% of the world's population that produces the world's wealth, yet has no say-so over how it is distributed. Every worker has a great stake in fighting these plant closings and mass layoffs. We reject that, UA, that General Motors has the right to close these plants and impoverish the workers who made their profits. We insist that the right of the working class to a secure and good paying job must come first. And we are confident that the power of the working class, united and acting on its own independent initiative, can stop these plants from closing. On Saturday, we will be assembling right here in front of GM headquarters. All workers, retirees and young people, the unemployed are welcome to participate. Bring delegations from your factories and workplaces, schools and communities to make your voices heard. To get involved and get more information, go to wsws.org slash auto. Thank you very much. And I'm more than welcome to take any of your questions. So then you don't believe the UAW is doing the right thing? Well, the UAW has a four-decade four record of boosting the profits of the corporations in the name of supposedly saving jobs. And in that period, since 1978, the number of jobs in the big three have fallen from 750,000 to 150,000. So we have no uh, belief that the UAW, which as I said, owns General Motors stock. Actually, the stock of General Motors increased the day they announced the shutdowns and the, the assets of the UAW increased. So this initiative is being taken by rank-and-file workers themselves. The steering committee of the Coalition of Rank-and-File Committees was founded here in Detroit on December 9th. It includes rank-and-file auto workers from Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. It includes teachers, Amazon workers, and others. And we are fighting, we see this demonstration as the beginning of a very powerful counter-offensive by working-class people. What would you guys do as far as your mobilization? Well, Auto workers are posting up inside the factories. Uh, young people at Wayne State and 
uh, Ann Arbor involved in our campaigning for this. There's a very aggressive campaign on social media. And uh, above all, uh, we're publicizing through the World Socialist website, which is the most widely read socialist publication. And our auto worker newsletter has been the voice of workers and a center of opposition uh, to the attacks on jobs and living standards. You should be aware also. That are upstairs, the executives are looking down. You should be aware also, we're the only ones that raise the defense of the Mexican workers. The only ones. The news media blacked it out entirely. You wouldn't know that one of the largest strikes in North America has been taking place over the last month. 70,000 auto workers have been out on strike over low wages and terrible conditions. And at the same time that this is happening, the UAW and Unifor have now taken a stand against those workers instead of uniting with them. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we are absolutely opposed to, and workers know it. There's no one, the UAW, have they called a single demonstration? Have they called a single strike? What have they done except to call for a, 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 uh, I think of a charge, a, a, a uh, lawsuit against the company? And a, of that, and a there's boycott. No <laughs> there's no mobilization at all <laughs> of the workers against these conditions. What kind of crowd are you guys expecting? Excuse me? What kind of crowd, how many people are you expecting? Well, we uh, of course have hoped to have the largest possible demonstration, but uh, uh, we also, the purpose of this demonstration, you asked what were we appealing to those at, at General Motors headquarters. The purpose of this demonstration is not to appeal to the powers that be. They are doing precisely what capitalism has always done. That is to destroy the jobs and living standards of workers to boost the profits of the rich. So we believe the demonstration will be the beginning of a development of an initiative, independent initiative of auto workers or every section of workers against the relentless attack on jobs and living standards. I mean, we live in a society where, what, five billionaires have more wealth than the bottom 150 million people in the United States? And opposition to inequality is growing all over the world. You have the yellow vest protests in France, the Maquilo Doro workers in, in Mexico, here in the United States, teachers have gone on wildcat strikes. So the main question is developing an independent initiative. That's what the steering committee of the Coalition of Rank and File Committees is fighting for. We believe that there's a movement taking place that will eventually move towards a general struggle. There is just massive opposition all over the country, and it finds no expression in the policies of the union. So you think there's definitely going to be a strike? Well, we we're, we're, look, the, the main obstacle to the development of, of the strikes have been the unions themselves. The unions actually explain that the main, in, in the Janus Supreme Court case, the union said union security is the exchange for no strikes. Where strikes have occurred, like in Los Angeles, the teachers or West Virginia, the role of the unions has been to shut them down as soon as possible and tell workers to vote for the Democratic Party. And the Democrats defend the corporate and financial elite no less ruthlessly than Trump and the Republicans. But there is a sentiment and as Larry explained, the logic of this growing opposition, because it doesn't matter if you're an auto worker or, a, or an Amazon worker or a white collar worker, all workers are facing insecurity. They're facing the gig economy. They're facing part-time temporary labor. And at the same time, massive sums of wealth produced by working class people were funneled to the banks on Wall Street after they crashed the economy and millions of workers have not seen a decent increase in wage for more than a decade. So the logic of the growing opposition of workers is to unite, in fact, in a general strike. And that poses the issue, who should run society? Should it be a handful of, of financial oligarchs, or should it be the millions and billions of workers on this planet that produce society's wealth? And shouldn't human need come, may be a priority over private profit?